definitely. Uh, where are you? Uh, can you pass? Hold on one second. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. All right, brother. What city are you in? Cambridge, Massachusetts. Oh, okay, Emirates, nice. Uh, yeah. Is the lighting okay? Oh, uh, yeah, it's excellent, excellent. How you doing today? No, 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 we good. Just light in my face. <laughs> That's um, let me see. All right, motherfucker, let's go. <laughs> sure. So I'm here with the king of African comedy. You may have seen him in films such as Next Friday and Meet the Blacks. How are you doing today? I'm great, man. Can't complain. Life is good. Man, uh, I'm a huge fan of your work. Um, you've coined the phrase mud sucker and are credited as the originator in the Urban Dictionary. How did you invent that word and what does it mean? What, mud sucker? Yeah. Oh, man. You know what? It's like... It's like a pronoun. What's what's that? Um, Motherfucker could be like a noun, a pronoun, a verb. It could be a person. You know, um, it's, it's so crazy how I came up with that phrase. It was 1998. I'm backstage at Comic View before I go on stage and do like a 30 minute special. You know, early in my career. And I'm backstage, like, you know, this BET, you cannot cuss. You know, when I'm used to usually going on stage and just saying motherfucker, motherfucker. Like when I perform anywhere in New York, Philly, whatever. And I'm like, well, I can't say that word, so I gotta I gotta replace it. So I'm like, mother sucker. Mother sucker. It's not a curse word, but it's a curse word. <laughs> And since then, it's been my word, man. So it's like, you know, you could be a mother sucker, you act like a mother sucker, you know, so it could be a noun, a verb, an adjective. Uh, you know, it just became my own, you know, now everybody uses it, you know. Um, and I, I'm just, I'm just glad my creative mind got together every bit of freaking 20, say, yeah, 22 years ago when I came up with that phrase, you know, so. Man. It's used on anybody. Anybody, your dog to be a mother sucker. You know, your girl get on my nerves. You acting like a mother sucker. You know, so hey, man, you could use it too, man. Anybody get on your nerve, you know, they could be a mother sucker. You just might good too. Yo, that's a good mother sucker right there. It, it could be good, it could be bad, it could be whatever you want it to be. Definitely. Uh, you started your career in the clubs in uh, Philadelphia, and that's considered like one of the scariest cities for a lot of comedians to perform. Was that a, a tough training ground? Uh, Philly was was okay. It wasn't that it wasn't as tough as New York. You know, I started out um, doing open mic in Philly, and the open mic night was mostly at the comedy club. And the comedy clubs are pretty much the safest place for a comedian to perform because people come to hear jokes. You know, it's intimate. It's just microphone, lights, and you. You know, it's not like performing in a nightclub. You know, where it's like people at the bar talking and, you know, not paying all attention or, you know, or like, on a, you know, I mean, comedy club is like so safe and it's, it's, it's our favorite place to perform. As much as we like those big venues, that's 10,000 seat, there's nothing like a 300 seat intimate room where a microphone lights in your face and 300 fans that came out just to listen to you speak. So it wasn't as bad, you know, uh, Philly is a tough city. I mean, a lot of, you know, it, it's, a, it's a place that would make you tough because of your environment. I don't think the comedy world, the comedy audience was as tough as they are in New York and other places, you know, like Atlanta. Atlanta could be tough, too. Definitely. Um, I've been following your career. I saw that you just dropped a video yesterday on Memorial Day it's called uh, I Want You Remix. And you uh, previously released music. Uh, you have the Matumbo video, of course. Uh, do you plan on dropping more music in the future? Uh, honestly, I mean, not unless I'm doing it with somebody really big, you know, like Drake or like Migos or my boy 50 Cent. Um, I'm not sure about doing a, doing a whole album. I probably could. I don't know how to, 
I'm not sure I'm going to take me serious. You know, I don't, I mean, I've watched comedians that try to do the rap thing and then, you know, a personal thing is for me. I would do a collab with like a, another person, like a big name person, maybe a, do a verse on their album, on a single or something, but I can't see myself trying to go for a whole rap career. That's, I love I love Afrobeat music, and that's how I end up doing the um, Mutumba one. You know, a kid in uh, Nigeria wrote a song for me, and he's an artist as well. So I remember going to Nigeria back in January, you know, we recorded this song, and then we shot the music video the next day. I love Afrobeat. The main, the, re the main reason why I'm even entertaining this whole music thing is a lot of time after I do a show, I always do an after party, like at a club. You know, and I'm like, okay, at the club, I'm not about to go on stage and tell them any jokes. This should have been in my show. So instead of that, I would perform whatever song I'm in, you know, just to entertain them, just to show them, hey, something to party to. But I'm not about to really go after a rap career. But like I say, if 50, if anybody big with a name, want to, you know, do something on their song, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do that. That's for fun and, you know, I'll just show, show another side of me as well. Definitely, man. I, I love the uh, comedy sketches you post online and you got uh, kidnapped by Tyrese and people actually thought that you were really kidnapped. And I guess um, you two may be doing a movie in the future. Uh, yeah, 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 we talked about it after that whole fake kidnap that the whole world thought it was real. They thought Tyrese lost his mind and kidnapped Michael Blackson, you know, but since it was, I mean, we pulled it off really well. We fooled the whole internet, you know, TMZ, the news, everybody got involved. The third was something was really going on, and we just played along with it for like a whole week, and finally we start. You know, it's enough of this game, you know. But I think just from doing that alone, you know, uh, he realized that I have a great acting skills, and of course he's a legend when it comes to acting. He's one of the great ones, and we figure out let's do something, something funny and you know and interesting. So we we definitely going to put something together once this COVID thing is over. With. Um, you're coming to America too. Comes out in December, man. That's uh, the sequel of like an iconic film. What was that feeling like? Uh, man, it's a great, great feeling in the world, man. It's like your favorite movie in the whole world, and then you get to be in the sequel. You know, uh, I mean, no words to explain how I felt when I was even when Eddie mentioned my name. You know, as a potential cast member, and to actually be on set and talking to a guy you look up to. Your, you know, your, your, your mentor, the guy that you, you know, you always thought about being like him once I started doing comedy. I want to be like Eddie, you know, uh, I want to be, because he was just so great. And to finally sit next to him and stand next to him and act with him and make him laugh on set was a great feeling, man. I feel like everything I wanted to do in this world is, is, is accomplished now, you know? So it just, the sky's the limits from here on. Definitely. Uh, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic is uh, still going on. How has that affected you, like, personally? Because obviously, I'm sure you had to cancel, like, show dates and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, man. I've lost so much money. I was in the middle I was in the middle of three tours when this whole thing, when we were shut down. You know, tour with Martin Lawrence, of course, some dates with Mike Epps, and I was on the Nick Cannon Wild Not Tour. So I'm entertaining the young, the old, everybody, man. It was, it was a great run, and it just came to a complete halt, like, early March. You know, but you know what, sometimes, man, we just need to take a break. As, as hard as we work and as much as we work, we would never take a break. We love to work. Sometimes just nature has to give us a break. You know, I mean, we don't want a break to be this damn long, you know, but hey, it is what it is, man. It just tells you that, you know, money isn't everything. I mean, think about it, last two months, we've been spending the money. We've all been stuck in the house. In a house, you can't spend money if you you in a house. You know, you just had to just need the food. Just told it. It just tells you that at some point in life, nothing would matter but food. You know, because I mean, I'm there. Those who had to pay rent, pay mortgages, nobody was bothering them. The landlord was not knocking your door for no money, because the government took care of the landlord. So the landlord's supposed to technically take care of you as well. You know, so hey, and you know, at the end of the day, it's all is what it is. What it is, you know, but. I think we're all ready to just get back to living life like we used to live in life. Definitely. And uh, speaking of, uh, you know, food being important, you recently helped uh, raise uh, money for the All In Challenge. Yeah. That was pretty incredible. That was, you know, that was cool. Um, I got some pretty important friends, you know, 
uh, Michael Rubin, who introduced me to David Steinberg, who me and him became really, really good friends. And these are all, you know, millionaires, potentially billionaires. And, you know, those guys are all fans of comedy. They love comedy. They love, they, you know, they, they love hanging with me. And we end up becoming friends, you know. And, and, you know, those guys told me, hey, Mike, let's do this challenge together. You know, all you got to do is just bring your, bring your act for free. You know, I said, okay, I'll be donating, donating my act. My act costs a lot of money. I said, I'll donate my act. You guys get the venue. You take care of the venue. You know, you take care of the dinner for whoever going to win this thing. And let's make it happen. So I'm just, I'm just glad I'm part, I'm part of something positive to help out the needy. Man, uh, that's awesome. And uh, I saw like uh, online, I was watching a video, you uh, you were talking about your girlfriend getting sperm facials. I guess oh my God, man. My celebrity treatment. That's a, that's a real. <laughs> my girl is wild. You know what? She was such a conservative lady when I met her. You know, but sometimes, a lot of times people, things are in them. It just takes the right person to bring it out of them. You know, and and that's what I did. I bring out the wildness out of anybody, you know. And it's a whole different side of her that she always had in her. And now she could be herself, you know, and express her feeling and be wild and crazy and talk crazy. They actually call her she, they, 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 they call her she blacks, and that's what they call her. Because lately, since she's been with me, she's been talking wild and just say whatever the hell comes out of her, her whatever comes to her mind, she's quick to speak it, regardless of how hard it is or how hard. Um, vulgar it is, she doesn't care. She'll just say whatever. And that's pretty much the female version of me. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Uh, what's next in your career? Uh, I'm working on, I want to work on a podcast. I'm actually talking, uh, I'm just waiting on my lawyer to agree to this contract that uh, this company sent out. But I mean, I see like, a, you know, my fans pretty much call me the Howard Stern of modern day. So they would like to see something like that. So I'm looking forward to that. And then I want to, you know, I mean, till I get my sitcom or whatever, we like, I want to do some kind of reality format type of thing with my life. I think my life is so interesting. You know, even my girl, the life that we live and the things that we do, I think it's very interesting. So I'm looking at either, you know, taking it to like, whether it be YouTube, maybe like an OnlyFans type of page where my fans would pay to see my behind the scenes of my life. So I'm looking, I'm trying to probably do that in the next couple of months. You know, I'm, I'm expecting a podcast to hopefully start very soon. And then um, during, while I'm doing that, I'll probably do the, um, the behind the scenes of my life, probably take that to OnlyFans and let the fans pay to see what goes on in my life when the cameras are off. Their yeah, that, that sounds amazing, uh, Michael. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time and stuff. I really appreciate you. No, no, no. I appreciate you, man. Hey, shout out to Boston. I love that city, man. Every time I come up there, I do like the Wilbur Theater, and I will make my way to the Foxwood Casino. I sell out every show. Man, I, show me so much love. I bought tickets to your last show at the Wilbur and stuff, and everything, but I didn't get to go. I was like, I was at the meet and greet and everything. I was mad as hell, man. I was like, <laughs> man. But you know what? Hopefully, when this thing is over, I know for like theater venues, it's you know big venues over like five hundred seats. I mean, those would take some time. You know, either when they if they come on vaccine or when they come on some kind of treatment. But COVID is probably when they're going to open those venues back up. But like the smaller venues, like, the, you know, they would probably cut those in half and still could do a show. I'm not sure what kind of small venues in Boston. Um, but as soon as something opened up, man, I'm definitely coming back, you know. But for now, I know like Georgia, Florida, Texas, those places have opened up and comedy clubs are open, you know, with a social distance format. So I'm, I'm definitely gonna be hitting those up like, you know, in the next month or so. Oh yeah, and uh, that's awesome and stuff and everything. I hope to uh, see you again in the future and stuff and everything. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Ah, uh, no, nah, the pleasure's are mine, you mother sucker. <laughs> All right, take care. You too.